Ooh, a Q and A. Ba ba ba. My favorite part of the day. Well, my favorite part of the show, I should say. And uh, this one, future millionaire. So let's be honest. Ninety-nine percent of the YouTubers were wrong. The opinions that we took from YouTubers got people wrecked. Yes, do your research. Blah blah blah. I was wrong on some things. It's the truth. Uh, no one knows exactly what it is, and uh, no one's perfect. We've gotten some things correct, but uh, it's pretty much educated guesses, and off you go. So for me, again, the only thing I can tell you is uh, squash the the unrelenting hopium and just be a little bit of realist and balance the brutal realities of what we're going on today to what could potentially be in, at some point in the future. Uh, Joshua, got to share. What's funny about holding is no matter what's going on, you either look like an idiot <laughs> or a genius. Once you filter the noise and focus on your goals, you just keep doing and succeeding. Yeah, like, again, not the sharpest tool in the shed myself. Uh, but as you dollar cost average along the way, some actually work out. Now, there's some that will never come back. And we talked about those numerous times. I don't know which ones those are. That's up for you to decide. But um, I can tell you that Bitcoin is the most stable in an in a unstable category. Let's be honest. It's, number, it's been number one since it debuted back in 2009, 2010. And things haven't changed. As all that talk about the flipping and things like that, it's still been Bitcoin. Does that mean that you're going to get rich off Bitcoin? Depends on how much you got in the beginning. But uh, it's pretty hard to go from 20,000 to 60,000. That's 3x, which is pretty good. But there's other opportunities out there. And um, that's if you want to go on my second channel, Dan Degen, that's for the degenerates. And you can check that out later. Uh, Gemma. Gemma. Everyone is expecting two 75 basis point hikes before year's end. Yep, November, December. As long as no surprises and things will get green. Pretty good assessment. Probably could happen, actually. Uh, and crypto golfer, someone said there's a lot of there's a lot of wrenches in here, and golfer says unfortunately diesel that means we are still in the bear market. The days that there are more wrenches there are more wrenches than non wrenches will mean the next bull run. Yeah, because right now everybody who's here, a lot of people have wrenches. They're uh, moderators, because you guys keep showing up and you keep coming back. But that means you've been here for a while. I trust you, so I give you the wrench. And that's when I look at those things, it's. I see the same people coming back. That means it's not tourism, especially right now. You're not a tourist if you're here. You're here for the long haul and you pretty much get it. So yeah, once we get to see like a handful of wrenches and everybody else is talking about, you know when the next bull run is? When everybody calls me a, a, a boomer moron and says that I have a PTSD from the last market, which is what they told me in 2021, that it would go up forever. And uh, that was it. And they're uh, like, ah, oh, you have PTSD from 2017. Now they're going to tell me I have PTSD for 2021 and 2017. And I'm a boomer idiot. And it'll keep going up forever. That's when we're in the bull run. And that's probably the time to sell. <laughs> that's just the truth. All right. Then he says, we're picking up the dry powder for DCA. That's a good way to do it. Diesel says I'm no longer a tourist. Oh, yeah. Jerry's solar and wind solution. I like that. Are you going to do a Voyager Club before the vote? Maybe after the 19th? Yes. And uh, I can tell you a lot of people are pissed off because of the FTX. The most people that are pretty ticked off about the FTX um, offer, are the people who own a lot of EGX tokens, because I thought that when I, the first read through, I thought they were going to give a, a good amount of EGX tokens. Everything was across the same. But now it looks like it's just $10 million for every BGX token, which I got to tell you is a pity buy, in my opinion, because... What does a VGX token, token do for FTX? Absolutely nothing. So they're like, well, this is worthless. And that's it. So I, um, I'll tell you when I, I'll tell you when I do the video. I know people are really ticked off at, at Sam Bakeman Freed from FTX because they're like, he's an opportunist and he did all these things and he sunk all these companies. And look, best offer that was out there. I'm just letting you know. That was the best offer out there. And there's other options you can do. It just takes a lot longer to do those options. I will ask you this. You can comment in the, in the comments. Just comment in the comment section. You can sound off in the comment section. Would you be okay with getting 72%, 70 to 72% back of your crypto or dollar value of that crypto? Or would you be okay with waiting two or three years 
putting that into another type of, say, a security standard token, and then waiting for it to rebound? It's a good question. And it uh, depends on, I guess, what your crypto was. You know? All right. <laughs> Darth Mike says, the wrenches are useful, man, just to keep out the spam and scammers. Yeah, and this one's probably the, it's like having an electric wire or, or around your farm. Yeah, nothing really gets in. Can we get some innovation in hard walls? Yeah, you know, the ledger doesn't have the best interface. It's still a little bit clunky, but uh, that'll change. <laughs> James, James is shilling SUI and ad posts. I don't know what that is. If he's shilling it, he's probably got a good reason for it. Jungle Link, legend. Are we going to the moon again? I think so. Beer markets don't last forever. Bull markets don't last forever. The real question is, are me and Jungle going to be able to sell at the right point? That's the big one. Raymond says, Rob, what happens if we're wrong? Crypto is just worthless. Then we all go down together. But I got to tell you, I got to tell you, in 2017, when I got in, I think it was more of, an, of a chance that would go to zero because there was like nobody really big getting into it. Uh, I mean, behind the scenes, we heard rumors and things like that. And uh, there wasn't a lot, ton of nodes and, and all these different ICOs that was just a straight up scam. We were pretty close to getting regulated out of, the, out of everything. But now, I mean, in 2017, if we would have heard that the president of the United States had garnished up an actual uh, summary and he put together a task force to evaluate crypto and digital assets and they put out a report and we had senators and politicians who were supporting crypto and there was new legislation come through, it would have blown off the roof. And of course, we didn't have, I don't know, an entire country using uh, uh, Bitcoin. Oh, and you know, we didn't have like, again, these mass mutuals and Black Rocks coming in and offering to all their institutional clients or uh, NYDIG offering it to, to, to mid to moderate sized banks to do custody. Look, uh, I don't think that these organizations and institutions get into it because they wanna lose money. I think there's too much money sloshing around behind the scenes, it's not gonna happen. And then also, I always think like this, politicians, governments, they want you to invest. You know why? So you can sell and they can get the capital gains tax. Taxes are a big thing. I don't know if you've heard of them, but uh, they love to tax you and they don't want you just to sit that money in the bank. It doesn't do anything for them. So yeah, I could be wrong though. Uh, Solana or Polygon, which choice would you prefer? Polygon. All right. So Polygon's got so much, they're everywhere. Uh, Hello, Lobo. Oh, that's a good question. Orlando says, Rob, with all the back and forth going on with Cell and the community's fine, do you think we'll be able to unite in time before we go into Chapter 7? <laughs> no, probably not. But um, I, I say it like it's so nonchalant. What I'm going to do is today, in uh, three hours, I've got uh, Aaron Bennett and... Uh, Tiffany Wong, I think, Tiffany. Uh, and they've been on top of what's going on with Celsius and, and happenings uh, of just behind the scenes stuff. And I'm going to be talking to them again in three hours. I'm gonna record it. I'm gonna give everybody a consolidated version of what happened with Celsius, uh, the lies and the truths that have been going on, what are the prospects, and also some of the different plans, notably the one from Simon Dixon. And we're going to go over all that. I'm going to condense everything, put them into bite-sized pieces so you can make the best decision. And that's, the, that's what I try to do because I've been in those groups, those uh, Twitter, what are they called? Twitter voices, Twitter, whatever it is. And uh, it's just a big, it's just a big ass show. Everybody's talking over everybody and everybody thinks that uh, they're right. And, and there's also people who are just straight up lying through their teeth. So uh, I'm just going to get away from that and just uh, do my own thing and just put together the information, the best information I possibly can. Twitter, Twitter spaces, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's, like, uh, it's like watching a presidential debate in there sometimes and like, geez, who cares? Yeah. Uh, this was orchestrated, though I thought I were right to buy them for pennies and Yeah, maybe so. 
if Dan was my dad, not only did he have kids early, but I'd be set, loving my pools in life. Well, you got to wait for me to, to, to croak, kid. James doesn't chill. He's a numbers man. That's true. Vicky, thank you. Vicky, thanks for the intro to uh, Cornucopias. Those guys are great. Uh, that's a good... So DYZ structure, stupid question. No stupid questions here. But is it possible to store stocks like Tesla on cold storage such as Ledger? No, nope. only for crypto, unfortunately. <laughs> James might shill, but he's not king of the shill. <laughs> Rob, is Bitcoin an asset or an investment? I don't know, talk to the CFTC. Maybe they can tell us exactly what it is. CFTC and the SEC. I'd like to see what that is. And if you really think about it, it could be both. Depends on what you use it for. Mm. Why are people mad on James? Everybody's mad on somebody. That's all. Most, you know what's funny? Most people love James. They just stay silent. They go, oh, James is a good guy. But the people that don't like James, they're pretty vocal. Same thing with me. People that like me, they're like, he's eh, not a decent guy. But the people that hate me, oof, those guys hate me. Uh... Are you bullish on Moonbeam? No. I don't, even, I don't even know what it, I mean, I know kind of what it is, but I don't invest into it. So I can't give you a correct answer because I don't have the knowledge base and I haven't done my due diligence. So that's the most honest answer I can give you. Not mean. We have come a long way, but we've got farther to go. That's for tr truth. Theta. I still hold Theta. It was one of my ones that I called correctly. Figure, go figure. I thought that theta, I thought it would go to $10 and it went to 14. So one of the very few that I got right. Thad says, if you were to start investing now in the market, let's say 5K, how would you enter? Buying one, two ledgers majority? Or would you wait for potential bigger dips? Not my situation, just interested. That's a very loaded question. And if it was, it's the, the question then is, is this me Rob as 20 year old Rob? Is this me Rob at 30 year old Rob? Is this me Rob at 60 year old Rob? Is this, I shouldn't talk in third person. That sounds so ridiculous. Um, it depends on, on where you're at in life, right? If you are like, I got a long time to invest and you know, I want to take some more risk, then probably the easiest one that I would do back then. And I can't, because everybody's situation is different. I would still buy Bitcoin because it's always been number one. And I'm not, that's not to say that it can't go through a flippening, but I've been hearing flippings for five years and that's, that hasn't happened. Uh, so I buy Bitcoin. Ethereum would be good for a while because everybody knows it. That doesn't mean it can't be superseded. I know there's a lot of great other projects out there. You got your polka dots, you got your Avalanche, you got your Cosmos, you got your Cardano, you got your Solana, blah, 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 blah. Near protocol, blah, blah, blah. So Ethereum will probably do pretty well for a while until some other king knocks it off. And then down there, I would start to get a little more risky. So it all depends on your out asset allocation. So for me, I just go, well, if I want to be more risky. Maybe I put 10% of Bitcoin, 10% into, into uh, Ethereum and 80% I just go straight degen. Let's say I'm a little bit more, I got a lot of wealth and I want to preserve that wealth. Well, then it flips on its head. I just want to preserve my wealth. I don't want to waste money, like uh, get into some crazy DeFi hack like Mark Cuban did. Sorry, Mark. And uh, yeah, I would stay away from those things, which is why I think that uh, institutions aren't getting in right now because they want assurances that they're not going to get ripped off. And uh, of course, everything changes. Like, oh, we thought we invested in the commodities. Now all of a sudden, Gary Gensler comes over and says everything's a security. Well, that kind of screws up our whole investment plan. So that's why I, I talk about it. So again, just depends on where you're at. I would, I would me personally, like I'm... I invest into, I still dollar cost average, but less than what I did before because I don't know which way the market's going. I'm waiting for some confirmation. Fed pivot or Fed to just blow up. War in Ukraine to cease or escalate. Different banks and central banks, Fed rate hikes, see what they're going to be. They go super high or super low. And then, of course, uh, the economy here. Unemployment goes up or down. CPI numbers. So I'm just waiting. So I was still buy Bitcoin, Ethereum. I don't buy Chainlink, although I probably should. Uh, Cardano, Solana, Near. What's the other one? Adam. 
But remember, those, some of those aren't every day. Some of those are every week, and it's a much decreased amount. And that's it. So did I say polygon? Polygon, yes. That's a great question. Hello from Brazil. How much investment in crypto today to be comfortable in 2030? It depends on where you're at. If you're in New York or Los Angeles, there's no amount of money for you to be comfortable because it's so expensive there. And then it really comes down to like, what makes you comfortable? What do you think is enough? I know, you know, DECA millionaires who are like, I need more. I'm like, what? Really? You got a nice yacht. What are you doing? And uh, you got these nice houses and you got a trophy wife, which hates you, but whatever. And uh, I'm like, is, is that enough? Like for me, yes, this looks nice and everything else. But uh, I mean, I still drive my sweet Dodge Grand Caravan. I could have got the caravan, but I, I, I splurged. I got a Grand Caravan for a minivan. And it's great. I don't have to buy Lambos or stupid expensive cars, whatever else. I don't have to have uh, huge properties to go around just for investments. So it really depends on you. But if you take a look at 2030, there's a great... So Jose, I'm going to show you something. Look into Bitcoin. Here, let me share my screen so you don't want to see my enormous head. So let's see. So you're in look, look into Bitcoin.com. Go to charts. And this one, I always like this one. Bitcoin rainbow price chart indicator. It's kind of like the lows and the highs of where we could go. Oh, this one doesn't do it. There's one, here, let me stop this. There's one where it can just kind of go off to infinity. Let me see if I can find it. Let me go here. Uh, 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 uh. That's not it. Oh, I know where it is. Aha. Mm, that's not it either. Let's go into the cryptoverse and show you the, everything on this on this website. Because uh, Ben's members get ticked off when I show too much. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Can this go any further? No, this is it. Well, let me show you this real quick. So this is uh, da, 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 market cap and trend line. I always like this one because it shows you the lows and the highs. I thought I went out farther. Yeah, that's just me. So you can just see here as like a trend line. Like we are below the trend right now. The lower band is, this is just market cap. Oops. Oh, it does do it longer. Let's go nine years. Yeah, now we're talking. And you can see that the market cap itself, we're at one point. Yeah, 1.8. No, nine, 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 sorry, 941 billion, excuse me. Fair value is 1.8, we should be double that. But as we go further into time, look at this, I like this. You're, I think 2030 you said, right, Jose? Great. So the upper band is 206 trillion, huh. all right. Fair value is 43 trillion, but the lower band is 11 trillion. Let's just say we're in the lower band or above that. Let's just say 15 trillion, that's like, Right now we're one trillion, 15 X, what you got? I can hang around for eight years for that. So I guess it just depends on what you're comfortable with. And remember, there's different uh, percentage gains depending on what you get into. Bitcoin may go up, I mean, it'll, it'll probably go up, but not as opposed to some other altcoins. That's why people love them, just saying. All right. Well, thank you for showing up. Tommy V says, is there a Matic unlock coming up? Show you something. Matic. I think it's here. Let me make sure I got it. Ah, uh, no. If you go to, oh, well, I should probably share my screen. <laughs> Sorry. So if you go to masari.io, 
there's two versions of it. There's a pro and there's a, uh, a free freebie version. I'll just use the freebie because I am chintzy. And let's see here. So we're going to Masari, M-E-S-S-A-R-I dot I-O. And we find Polygon. And we take a look at metrics. And I know... there is a way to get into ah it's stock it's locked but there's a way to to get in here and it'll tell you like when the unlocks are let's see mm. where did i put that Oh, well, I'll find it in a bit. So as far as I know, not so much. But you know what? Even if like, even if there's unlocks right now, you understand, uh, like me personally, like I've invested in some other uh, tokens. I'm not selling those tokens right now. Like I invested into uh, Fame and Genso Kishi. Again, you can find that when I'm talking about on uh, Dan Degen channel. And I'm under unlocks for a year. I'm not going to sell them right now. It's, it's junk market. So I'll probably wait on for a bit. But some people will sell. Uh, <laughs> Des, Robbie invited us for a pool party when we get an all-time high. Love to see the green screen. Yes, all green screen. Very, very difficult to pull this off. Oh, this is a great question. Jan says, Rob, the Biden ban on semiconductor knowledge workers in China, hot or cold for America? America. So I just talked about this. As a matter of fact, what we're talking about bring this up is there was a thread from uh, Jordan Schneider. He's an analyst at uh, Hodium Group on China and tech. And what just happened, I didn't know that was actually happened. This is a thread uh, post earlier about a week by Li Dinzeng. Lots of people don't know what happened yesterday. This was the last like the ninth or 10th. To put it simply, Biden has forced all Americans working in China to pick between qu quitting their jobs and losing American citizenship. That's debatable. But as far as American citizenship, but what they're saying is like, look, we're not going to support you if you're over in China or working with Chinese manufacturers of, of chips. And they cut it all off. And I was like, wow, that's kind of ballsy. Every American's executive in engineering work in China's semiconductor manufacturing industry resigned yesterday, paralyzing Chinese manufacturing overnight. And you can... Just follow me on Twitter. You can read this whole thing. It's pretty interesting what they did. And then there was a, a piece here, U.S. management team. Do U.S. colleagues, you may have heard, on Friday, October 7th, the U.S. government issued a new set of regulations prohibiting support to certain fabrications in China by U.S. persons. And it goes on from there. And then if you take that on top of the CHIPS Act, which what's the CHIPS Act? It's a uh, House approves $280 billion bill to boost. Ah, get out of here. Let me try that again to boost manufacturing production counter China. And you can read it if I didn't have to pay for the stupid article. Basically what it is is they are trying to bring semiconductors and manufacturing jobs back to America. How do they do that? Well, they're going to incentivize these companies to do so forth. On top of that, they just stifled innovation, not stifled innovation, but stifled the work production flow of American workers in China. I support that. Sorry. It's true. I've always thought personally that we have shipped way too many jobs, way too manufacturing, way too many products outside of America. And I'm all for globalization. That's fine. But it seems like China has a stranglehold in those things. Oh, and by the way, there's a reason why we have an, uh, an economic degrade uh, because of supply. It's because the supply chains are hurting because there's constant lockdowns from China and there's zero policy on coronavirus. I'm not getting political. I'm just saying that's just the truth. They have lockdowns in China. Supply chains suffer. Prices go up. And if you not, haven't noticed, uh, the, the Fed Reserve is trying to stifle demand by rising interest rates. So for me, I remember during the coronavirus time, not to get into that subject. I don't care if you <laughs> what do you think about that. But we couldn't even manufacture masks here. 
We couldn't even manufacture. We couldn't do a simple mask manufacturing here in America because it was all shipped out elsewhere. And I knew a lot of people when I was younger. I mean, I just saw the jobs just degrade. So for me, if this leads to more, to uh, higher capacity for a workforce, I'm all for it. It might hurt some companies and raise the margins. I get that. But that's what I see. Probably not a popular opinion, but I don't care. <laughs> I got two comments today. Mic drop. Oh, plenty. Trust me. Uh, I like James too. I like Ben. I like George as well. <laughs> that's, an old, that's an old reference to an old movie. Uh, Network, I think it is. That's a good one. Nope. Uh, that's an abyss. Rob, what would you think about Bitcoin? I think it's probably going to be here for a while. Could be wrong. Hello? <laughs> I'm rapidly approaching that age, I'll tell you that. And I sure feel like it some days. Any word on Flair? No, I don't have any word on Flair on that one. Not memes. Says, what's your thoughts on Tesla? Oh, pretty transformative company. And I think it'll do well in the future. Just depends on, <laughs> just depends on how, nah, it'll probably do pretty well in the future. I actually own some stock in Tesla. And I even DCA Tesla stock, which is one of the rare ones that I actually do. Uh, Tesla and Amazon there was something, Airbnb. And the reason is because um, I have an Amazon business, so I kind of feel like, like I kind of understand that whole industry. And then Airbnb, we do Airbnbs for our properties. And, uh, and, and Tesla, I just think it's going to be a good one. So those are my three, but it's very small. Uh, JT says, seems when you're old, you should gamble more. Roll the dice. If not, now the one's a good point, actually. Could, could potentially start gambling like crazy. Um, I don't have any thoughts on that. <laughs> Tommy says, Ben says link to 1,000x. No, he does not say that. I know he was on Altcoin Daily, and he was not happy with that thumbnail. Uh, we talked about that in the DCA show. You can find that over on James's channel. Ben, James asked him that specific question. Why do you say Chamberlain was going to 1,000x? He goes, I didn't say it was 1,000x. That's just what the thumbnail said. He goes, so. Uh, he's like, no, it's not going to 1,000x. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan is not your dad. Thank you, Capo. And this is not financial advice. Yes, exactly. Corey's got a good point. Never been a better time to be an investor. This is the time. Uh, the people that made the most money in real estate 2007, 8, 9, where everything collapsed. And they were able to buy up properties. They're still living off those. So just saying. Oh, I don't know. I think that's it. Let me see. Who made the thumbnail? Well, it was on Altcoin Daily's channel. So I'm assuming Altcoin Daily did that. Um, this will be the last one. Rob, when to go all in for Bitcoin? What's your buy plan? I've never liked that strategy, but it works. It's worked in the past and I can't tell you to do that because I won't do it. However, I've had Diddy on the show from the Bitcoin family and man, talk about great timing. That guy hit it off at, he went all in at a thousand bucks. And 2000, early 2000, late 16,000, early 2017, and sold his uh, his house, business, cars, put it all in Bitcoin, living off that right now. And uh, sure, it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense now, retrospectively. But what if you did that in 2017 at the top? Well, right now you'd be under, you'd be actually be down because at the top it was like 19,800 or somewhere around there. And I think today Bitcoin's at 19,100. So for five years, you would, have been, you would have lost out if you'd just been holding forever. So it's not my strategy. Some people love that and they say, that's the only way to do it. I just don't, that's not me. But that could be you and that's it. So look, everybody, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up and subscribe, all that great stuff. And that's all for today. Also, when I'm done uh, talking to uh, Aaron and Tiffany, 
uh, on the Celsius issue. I'll have that up hopefully today, maybe tomorrow, but that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. Appreciate y'all. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Get out of here Sunday, watch a little football. <laughs>